our power within. Uh, it's important for us to have fire uh, within us, and, and that's at our very core. If we have a fiery core, and I'm talking about the spirit man, if we have a fiery core, it's going to fuel healing, a healthy mind, a healthy body, uh, uh, prosperity, and ministry. So it's really important for us to have <clears throat> a fiery core, and I call that the fire power, because uh, we know from um, uh, Matthew that G Jesus said he, he's going to baptize us with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and uh, fire. fire, and uh, the Spirit is also t talked about as being the power of God. So I'll put those together. I don't want them to be separated out and let people think, oh, I I've got part of it, but I don't have the other part. So let's just realize what we need is the fire power. Hallelujah. And, and that comes from, of course, the Holy Spirit. But if we think about Jesus and what he said, why he came to earth. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of different reasons, a lot of different things we could talk about, about why he came to earth. But one of the things he said <clears throat> Uh, was from Luke uh, that he came to start a fire on the earth. Oh, hallelujah. And, uh, to set the whole earth on mm -hmm. fire. That's why he came. Set the earth on fire. And, and uh, I'm going to ask Sherry to read this verse. Luke 12, 49. I came to throw <clears throat> fire on the earth. I wish it were already kindled. So the, here's a reason why Jesus came. Set the earth on fire. And he's not going to do it on his own. He's sitting, sitting mm -hmm. at the right hand of the Father. So he's going to take, it's going to take you and me and people like us uh, to set the earth on fire. And and the only way we can do it is if we have the fire within us ourselves. And so where's the fire come from? Well, uh, two main sources. It comes from the Word mm -hmm. of God, and it comes from the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask Sherry to read these two verses. Okay. Uh, about the fire being in the Word of God and the Spirit of God. In Jeremiah 29, 23, 29, Is my word not like a fire, declares the Lord? And then in Matthew 3, 11, As for me, I baptize you with water for repentance. Now this is John the Baptist speaking. But he who is coming after me is mightier than me, and I am not fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. So the word of God is a fire. The Holy Spirit is fire. And we need both of these. We can't just go by one and not the other. It takes both of those to ignite a fire in us. And I call that the firepower that's within us. Mm -hmm. And it's in the core. It's not up here in the mind. It starts in the core. And what happens when the, and we'll see this through this uh, message tonight, that when that fire, uh, when we've got the fire within us, it's going to clean out the things in our spirit. So if we have some things in our spirit, man, that shouldn't be there, it's going to be the fire of God that burns it up. Okay. And then, uh, what what's the next thing that happens? Well, if we have the fire within us, it's going to spill out into other parts mm -hmm. of our lives, and so it's going to go into our uh, into our soulish area. So it starts in the spirit, and that's what we'll see in this message. It spills over into the soul, and how does it work? How does that work? Well, we know from Romans twelve verses one and two that we're to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. Oh, okay, but that's flesh. And so we we crucify the flesh, but you can see throughout the Bible, God never wanted raw flesh. That's so right. you have to burn it. So you Woo! burn it on the altar so that it becomes a burnt sacrifice. Mm. And then our mind is renewed. And so you've got to have the fire in the core of you, in the very core, and that's your spirit, man, and it also called your heart, and then that is going to spill over, and it's going to burn up the flesh, so it cleans out the spirit, it burns up the flesh, and then it spills over into the other parts of our body, 
to bring a sound mind, <clears throat> to be to bring a renewed mind, mm. and not only that, but it doesn't stop in the body. It, it also goes out to our spirit. I mm -hmm. mean, out to our finances and goes out. Uh, so it starts in the core. It goes up into our soulish area. That's our mind, our will, and emotions. And then it shows up in our finances and, and our finances. Mm -hmm. He wants us to prosper, but it doesn't, it doesn't start from just the financial area. It starts, everything mm -hmm. starts, starts on the, the inside. In the spirit. Not only is it your healing and your healthy body and your healthy mind, and the renewed mind, they all come from the fire that's within you, the firepower within you and your prosperity, uh, but also your ministry. We're going to look at that. Uh, God has a ministry for all of us, and it's going to come out of a fiery core, the very core of us. Mm -hmm. And so we can't think, oh, I'm going to go out here and do a bunch of stuff and not have a fire within it's not going to be effective. We're going to see that it takes the fire within. It's going to spill over to our soul and then over into our finances and into our ministry. And, mm -hmm. and, and it all relates together. And it all starts because God looks at the heart. So he told uh, Samuel. Samuel one time went and uh, to Jesse's house and he looked at all of his sons and he said, Ooh, Oh, this is a good looking Mm -hmm. uh, young man, he looks like a king. He appears to be a king. And so Samuel wanted to anoint him to be king. But then uh, God said, no, I don't look at people the way man mm -hmm. looks at people. I, I don't look at their outward appearance. I don't look at how tall they are or how short they are. I look at the heart. So God's looking at our heart. And if there's anything in our heart that's not supposed to be there, he wants it burned up by his mm, fire hallelujah. that comes by his word and by his spirit. And I'll um, give you a couple of examples. <clears throat> we know from Mark chapter five, and this is the woman with the issue of blood that uh, and started you know, in verse 25. And I'll just quickly tell the story uh, that uh, she had an issue of blood for her. Uh, uh, 12 years. And so she'd spent all her money. She'd gone to the physicians, uh, to the doctors, and they weren't able to help her. And the, she just got worse and worse. Uh, but when she heard about Jesus, see, her faith began to arise. And, and uh, she had something on the inside of her. And, and that caused her to want to to go through the crowd. And she wasn't even supposed to be there That's right. uh, because she would have been considered to be unclean to the people that were there, but she went through and made her way through it. And she touched the hem of his garment for she said within herself, and this way she activated her faith. If I may, but touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Well, what happened in verse uh, 30 was that Jesus recognized the power went out of him. So there were two things in action right then. It was her faith and his power and the power of the Holy Spirit that flowed through him. So it was actually the power that healed her, but it was activated by her faith. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Jesus realized that the power had gone out of him and he, see, he didn't do it. It was somebody drew it out of him. Hallelujah. And he turned around looking for who had done that. And, uh, uh, the disciples, uh, they they thought he was silly, uh, but he knew the power had gone out and somebody had activated that and drawn it out by their faith. Mm -hmm. And so the woman uh, told him uh, the story that she had come there and uh, she had received her healing. She was healed. Uh, but you see, it's two things. It's the faith of the individual and it's the power of God. And it's the power that does the mm -hmm. healing but the faith activates it. And that's a really an important, uh, important point that I want to make. It's both things, something that we have inside of us, that's that fire. And it's also the power of God. And so when you put those together, I call it fire power. Ooh, hallelujah. Well, I have an example. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I have a personal example of what Brother Fred was 
speaking about right there, and that was, uh, it's it's been several years ago, maybe 10 years ago, I was in the mountains of Honduras, and we were doing a, a, an evangelistic uh, conference, and so for three nights, uh, I taught in, in the Word of God, and, and people were um received Jesus as their savior they were baptized in the holy spirit and and there was just um energy and power uh, that was in the atmosphere there well on the last night that we were there uh i began to minister and the scripture that i gave was acts um chapter is he is it it's not the mark five no, no, no. It was um, how Jesus see. went about. Uh -oh. uh, okay. Acts, how, 10, Acts 10, 38. Acts 10, 38. Uh, that's the scripture that I started with. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the, of healing all the diseases and Healing all that were oppressed that, of the devil. Uh, all that were oppressed of the devil. And so um, I spoke that out. And all of a sudden, <clears throat> people, the people out there in the in the group uh began to uh run to the to the altar. And they began to uh some of them even climbed on on, on the the platform and they began to 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 touch my skirt and and to touch my arms and and one uh, one woman wanted to touch my hands and and they began to receive and I believe that that was firepower. Yes, that's right. They had that. It. That was you know they were drawing it out of out of me, but it was the Lord that was had re just uh, put that firepower inside of me and they were drawing it out. And people were being slain in the spirit. People were healed that night. Uh, there was a miracle that night. Legs began to grow out, and and arms and and spinal cords were were straightened, and and um uh, and it was it was just a wonderful, uh, powerful night in the Lord. And I believe it was because of His firepower. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Another example I want to give is that uh, Sherry and I were out. Uh, prayer walking with some people the other day and there was a woman leading uh, the group and she was up ahead of on, on ahead of all of us on the trail and uh, that was a woman that uh, hadn't been able to walk yeah. uh, that uh, there were many days that she just have to stay in her house because she couldn't walk because she had so much pain in her body uh, but but one day she had a word of knowledge for her that uh, she had uh, bitterness and unforgiveness in her uh, life that went back to when she was a child. Mm -hmm. and, and so she began to cry and repent of that. And, and see, this is the cleansing coming. This is the mm -hmm. purging coming. And so that's what the fire does. It purges, purges out. and it starts in the, in the inner man so that you've got a fire raging there. But if there's anything holding it back, any kind of hindrance, it's not a big fire. Uh, and so we, we've got to have enough fire uh, inside of us to burn up these hindrances. And so uh, then here, here we were a few days after that word of knowledge and she had acted <laughs> on it, she had repented and, and she was healed and she could, t and she could walk. Not only did she walk, <laughs> she was out ahead of us, all the rest of us. So walking, she was, she was leading all of leading us. Leading the way in, in the woods. And that, this is a woman that hadn't been able to walk. Uh, and so now her spirit man, see the very core of her had, had fire within it uh, and, and burned it up. And then that creates a healthy spirit. And I have a verse uh, that I'd like Sherry to read about a healthy spirit. But where did the healthy spirit come from? It had the fire within it. It burned up all the hindrances, such as bitterness, mm -hmm. such as unforgiveness, the fire power within burned up everything in the spirit that shouldn't have been there and then it's a healthy spirit and what happens when you've got a healthy spirit Jerry? it says in proverbs 18 14 and this is from the message uh translation it says a healthy spirit 
conquers adversity. Oh, okay. So it starts in the spirit. Mm -hmm. and you can have sickness in your body, sickness uh, out here, so any kind of adversity, and you'll overcome it from from within. From within. It didn't mm -hmm. say, oh, mm -hmm. you get enough uh, uh, people together and they get their uh, uh, bats and, and uh, uh, instruments and they go out there and start beating on people. No, it's the power within. The fire within mm -hmm. cleans the spirit and then the healthy spirit comes forth and it can overcome sickness. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. That's good. That's, that's, good. that's where it that's where it comes from. Mm. Uh, hallelujah. And I have a couple of other verses I'd like Sherry to read beyond this. Ephesians 3.20 Now to him who is able, well, this is one of my favorite scriptures, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power, the dunamis, the fire, that works within us. Okay, I want to stop here for a minute. This is Ephesians 3, verse 20. Mm. And it talks about the power of God. Where is that power of God? It's the power of God within us. God can do great things, even more than you could imagine, if you allow that power of God to be activated. And what is it going to take to activate it? Well, it says... Uh, in, in the translation, it says works, the power that's at work. So you've got two things here. You've got the power mm -hmm. that's working. Now, w when I looked at the original Greek on that, that word working is exactly what I saw as energy. It's the power mm -hmm. that's energized. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. can do great things through mm -hmm. you with his power through the power that you have energized. And so it has two aspects. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason I call it a fire power. There's the power, here's the fire. And, and so that's the, and, and again, the Greek, if you look at the Greek, mm -hmm. in English, we just say it's way it works, but in the Greek, it says energy. So it's power that's energized. See, you can have a, uh, a sports car with a lot of power, a lot of horsepower. But until you put energy in it, uh, into the gas tank, you put some gasoline in it, and, and you start it, start up, it and, up, and you put your foot on the accelerator, now you've got the energy feeding the power and activating it, and now the sports car goes very fast. So it's I love not, it. It's not <laughs> just the power, but it's how much of the power is being activated oh, hallelujah, being hallelujah. in your life. Amen. Now, the next, and this is the same word, but we're going to move to Colossians uh, chapter 1, verses 28 and 29. And this talks about Paul's ministry. He said, I'm going to be teaching and I'm going to be admonishing and I'm going to bring people up into maturity and make them complete in Jesus. But, but I'm going to do it by the power that's within me that's being activated or mm -hmm. energized within me. So ministry, see, is coming from the energy that you have, the fire mm -hmm. that you have, and it's going to ignite the power. The two things go together, fire and power. Fire, power, you ignite it, and that's the way you minister. Go ahead and read these two verses here, please. It says, 28 says, We proclaim him, admonishing every person and teaching every person with all wisdom, <clears throat> so that we may present every person complete in Christ. Hallelujah. Verse 29. For this purpose, I also labor, striving according to his power, which works mightily within me. Okay. See, these are my two verses that, that the Lord shared with me, that the Holy Spirit revealed to me. This is the way I minister. I minister by the power that's within me that is energized, that's on fire. And it's a work within me. It, it's not out here because of my intellect. It, it's not because of my strength. It's because of something on the inside, a fire within me. 
And, and this is the way I minister. And, and I teach and I admonish and I bring people up into the maturity. So I, so I, my role is to help people grow into maturity. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't do it through intellectual teaching. I do it from a fire that's within me Ooh, that is activated, that's activated. Mm -hmm. and, and, and see the, the power is the Holy Spirit, but, but it has to be activated by what's in me. And that, and that can be faith in action, faith in action. And they connect just like the woman with the issue of blood. She had the faith. She gener she grabbed hold of his garment. Yes. And the power came out of Jesus, caught hold of the faith and the power, and they came together and she was yes. ill. Now the doctors couldn't heal her. They they had spent twelve years trying to heal her and she just got worse and worse and worse. But when the faith and the power came together, oh, her faith hallelujah. and the power of God through Jesus. It was an explosion. And there was just this great energy mm, going forth mm. like an explosion. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, hallelujah. Now what I'm saying, and just kind of highlight and recap what we're talking about here, is it takes a fire in your core. And if you have this fire in your core, which set on fire. Mm, oh, hallelujah. Yeah, set on, set on fire. It's going to it's going to burst. It's going to clean out your spirit. And then it's going to move into other areas of your life. But now remember the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus turned to her and she testified that uh, she was healed. And he said, daughter, listen to this. Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Well, it was his power. But, she, but he said, it's your faith that made you whole or made you whole excuse me, made you well, go in peace. Now, I like that mm -hmm. phrase there. That meant that she, she had everything cleaned up in her life. She See, that fire, she had that fire, and it cleaned things up. And, and then she was ready to receive the power. Oh, hallelujah. There's a lot of people yeah. with, with stuff in on the inside of them, and they don't mm -hmm. have enough fire mm -hmm. to burn it up to clean their spirit so that they can go in peace. There, there's still some guilt or there's still some condemnation or there's something going on or unforgiveness or bitterness because they haven't cleaned it up because it's going to take the fire to clean it up. Yeah. Then you'll have a healthy spirit if you have the enough fire in you to clean up all of the stuff that's not supposed to be in your spirit. And then that fire is going to just spread throughout your body and every area of your life into your finances and into your ministry. Hallelujah. Now, into your family. So it all starts with the spirit. But now let's go to third John. Um, there's just one chapter, but it's verse two. Let's look at it. And something happens. First, we've already talked. It starts in the spirit. Now it goes to the soul. And when it goes to the soul, it's going to affect your healing your health, your prosperity. And it's all summarized right here in this verse. Yes. And this verse right here is my, our daughter, uh, Amy Elizabeth. Uh, she, this is her favorite verse uh, because the name Amy actually means beloved. And so this scripture says, beloved, I pray that in all respects, you may prosper and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. Oh, hallelujah. Okay. So Hallelujah. here's health. This is something we want. Prosperity, this is something we want. But we have to have the prosperity in our soul first. So it, everything starts in our spirit. And we get that fire going there. That cleans up the spirit. Then the fire moves into our soul area. And that's our Inside mind, our thinking. emotions, and our will. And that's our thinking. And that begins. we begin to think like Christ. Uh, we begin to think like God. You know, his thoughts are higher than our mm. thoughts. And then that fire goes over into our body and goes into our finances. So let's look at this verse again. He said, I pray that you're, that you prosper and be in health, yeah. even as your soul, just as your soul. Okay. So here, let's say, let's look at prosperity for a moment. Let's say this hand, I'm talking about prosperity. Okay. This is our soul. Now 
our soul, if our soul only has a little bit of prosperity in it, our prosperity, our financial prosperity is not going to go any higher. But if we have a very prosperous soul, then our prosperity can go all the way up there. Ooh, but that's a limit. Yeah. And so if, if we don't prosper our soul, then uh, we're not going to have much financial prosperity from God's perspective. Okay, what about healing? Well, uh, here's our soul again, this arm, this mm -hmm. hand. Okay, and so if we just have a, if our soul, we've just done a little bit of uh, restoration in our soul, then our he healing and our healthy body can only come that high. But if we, if we have fire in our spirit and then in our soul and our soul prospers, then we can have a lot of prosperity. We can have a lot of healing, but this is going to be the limit. It's how well our mind has been renewed to the word of God. It all starts here though, in the core, in the spirit. And that's not the soul. Remember uh, Hebrews uh, 4, 12 says, that the word of God separates the spirit and the soul. So those are two different things. The word of God separates the spirit and the soul. So a lot of people just mm -hmm. think, oh, they just all go together. But if you know the word of God, you'll be able to see that you have a spirit and you have a soul. And your spirit's down here, and I call that your core. Mm -hmm. That's the spirit, man. That's the heart. Uh, and, and up here, that is the soul. This is your mind, your will, emotions. And, and so the fire starts here in your core, and, and then it begins to spill over into your soul. Um, then you can prosper, and then you can be in health. There is a process because we're in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. We're in God's kingdom, mm -hmm. and we have to follow his process. Yes. See, doctors try to... Uh, Sure, they try to help you the best they can, but a lot of times they only medicate symptoms. And yet the Holy Spirit's going to get down to the root. Hallelujah. And the root a lot of times is in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Like I told you, the woman who couldn't walk is because she had a root problem. Well, I, I, if she had gone to the doctors, and she may have gone to the doctors. Yeah, she had uh, been to the doctors. That, they would have just given her something to deal with the symptoms of her foot hurting and not being able to walk. But the Holy Spirit goes down to the root and the root of the problem that she was actually was dealing bitter, with bitterness. was bitterness and unforgiveness that came from her early childhood. And she just held on to those things. She's still mad. She still uh, uh, had some unforgiveness against the people that did things to her. We've all... Uh, been victims of abuse. We've all suffered harm by the hands of other people. Are we going to hold on to it or we're going to release it? The way we release mm. it is to repent and ask God to forgive us. Hallelujah. He is faithful, Hallelujah. faithful to forgive us. This is first John 1 9. He is faithful to forgive us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Okay, Amen. now I have four applications. And we're going to be looking at how can we fire up our core and keep it active. And so how can we have fire in our core and keep it active? That's, that's the thing. Now, mm -hmm. we're going to look at four different points. And the first one is love. It takes Hallelujah. love. Hallelujah. If you have love, it will create fire within you. Now, let me talk about that for a moment. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Sherry and I have uh, been basically in uh, church congregations all of our life. And uh, we thought we loved people. Uh, but the thing about God's love is you have to show it. You have to demonstrate. You have to ex ex express it. Express it. And, uh, and so what we did uh, uh, years ago, we started going out into the neighborhoods and, and uh, ministering to children. Uh, we just be we drive through the neighborhoods and we would see shows we and... see uh, young people out there uh, playing on the playground. We didn't ask anybody if we could do it or not. We just brought out our puppet board and uh, had puppets and we told them about Jesus. 
and their parents, they would all gather around. The children would sit there and watch us, and the parents would be around. They'd listen. So we were ministering to people. We were just ministering to them. And and that's when our love began to grow. Yes. And then after a while, uh, we created a mission downtown for homeless people, for drug addicts and uh, prostitutes uh, and, and uh, alcoholics. And so that's when our love began to grow. Up until that time, we thought we had love, but, but God's love has to be active. It has to be poured out. Yeah, you, you can't just keep it. And, and so when you have real love and you're, you're out there serving people and you're loving on people uh, and, and loving people, th then your love begins to grow. And, and Galatians chapter five, verse six makes this really interesting statement. It says, faith is energized by love. Hallelujah. Galatians five, six. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything, but faith working through love. Okay, there's that word working again. Faith works by love. Our faith is energized. Is energized. That if you look at the Greek word, you'll see it's energized. Faith is energized by love. And so if you want your faith to have energy in it so it can connect with power, and cause an explosion, you've got to have your, you've got to have love. And love, see, is not a word you can say and really mean it. You have to express it. You have to demonstrate it by going out and loving people who are unlovely. Yeah. It's one thing to love people who look like you and, and, and act, act like, like you, you. But, but it's another thing. Uh, see, Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus went out there among the sinners. Oh yeah. Oh, he touched the lepers. He, he, he did some incredible things mm. and we're going to demonstrate his love on the earth. We've got to follow in his footsteps. So it's love that sets us on fire oh, in our hallelujah. heart hallelujah. and causes our faith. To, Lord, give me more heart. love, more of your love. Lord. Okay. So Woo! how can we be on fire and how can we stay on fire first love and mm -hmm. i'm not talking about just words but i'm talking about action yeah uh, love in action where Amen. you're going out and hurting the helping the people that are hurting oh glory to god number two mm -hmm. is is the word and uh what we see after jesus was resurrected he was walking on the road with two men and he was opening the scriptures to them and explaining that that he must be crucified and that be raised from the dead. And so he was explaining the scriptures to to these men. And this is in Mark. And I'm going to ask Sherry to read this. See what they said. I believe it's in Luke. Luke, Luke 20, I'm sorry, Luke, sorry. Luke 24, verse 32. They said one to the other, were our hearts not burning within us when he was speaking to us on the road? while he was explaining the scriptures to us, question mark. Hallelujah. So how, <laughs> the word set them on fire. The word set them on fire. And how did it happen? Well, because they were having fellowship with Jesus. But mm. the question I want to ask mm -hmm. you, are you fellowshipping with some people that are like Jesus, that they're going to set you on fire? Woo! That they're going to share the scriptures with oh. you and set you on fire? Because this Hallelujah. is the number, the number two thing. It comes from the word of God by the word becoming mm. the word becoming alive and fellowshipping mm. with one another around the word. It, it's not about around the food or around the picnic or around the restaurant. It's around the word. Oh, hallelujah. And, and, and then that's going to set you on fire uh, because the Lord said, my word. My word <laughs> is a fire. A hammer and a fire. And, and so you, mm. you, you've you got to be sharing it. You've got to have people that are like Jesus in your life, and they're sharing uh, the scriptures and what they mean, and then that will cause a fire to be ignited within mm. you. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Now let's hallelujah. look at, hallelujah. at uh, if Hebrews 4, 12, and this is just the first part of it, but this is from the Amplified. I want you to read this. Still about the word. It's still about the word. It's just another confirmation about the word energizes us. Okay. For the word of God is alive and active and full of power, making it operative 
energizing and effective. Oh, energizing. Oh, you see, hallelujah. That's right there in the Amplified. I told you that's in the Greek, but here, this is in the English. It says energize. The word is energizing. Hallelujah. Oh, so we've got to be God. sharing the word with one another. And, and again, it's not just fellowship around the TV or the movies. It's fellowshipping around the word of God. So the first one is love. Love energizes our faith. Yes, and you. second, it's about the word of God. We've mm. got to be fellowshipping around the word. We've got to be sharing the word. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And the third one, mm -hmm. we can have the fire imparted into us. Oh, hallelujah. We need some people around us like Jesus mm -hmm. that are going to impart impart the fire the fire to us right? Let's read hallelujah this. let's read this verse here thank you jesus this is in second timothy 1 verse 6 this is from the amplified bible that is why i remind you to fan the flame the gracious gift of god that inner fire the special endowment which is within you through the laying on of hands with those of the elders at your ordination. How did, Timothy, how did Timothy get the inner fire? The fire within him. How did he get it? It was because the elders gathered around him, laid their hands on him, prophesied to him, and they imparted the fire to him. If you had some people impart the fire to you, now if you have, you can let it go out. And, and so it could have Hallelujah. been imparted to you, but you could let it go out. And so you've got to... You've got to keep it burning, keep it blazing, mm -hmm. keep the fire within. So the third way is you can have it imparted to you. Yes. Okay, go ahead. There's, uh, when we do uh, ministry with groups, especially when we're talking about uh, the fire of God, uh, we have what I call a fire tunnel. And it's just a piece of cloth and, and people are on all different parts of it, holding it up. And people walk through it if they want to, if they desire to, and we we uh, lay hands on them and impart unto them the fire of God, and and this is this is wonderful, and the people receive, uh, they come through that fire tunnel, and if you've not been through a fire tunnel, you can do it right there where you are. And we're going to impart tonight before we finish this session. If you want to receive tonight more fire, uh, more love, more of his uh, uh, fellowship, uh, then you can receive it tonight. So people have been giving some feedback to us that uh, they've been seeing the fire in Cherry's hand. The blue mm -hmm. fire comes out. Blue flames come out of right. her hand. And that's been uh, when they she lays hands on people, but it's also been in sessions like this uh, over the internet, yeah. over Zoom, and people have seen the blue fire. Uh, and so when she's releasing the power you, and the fire, you need to receive it because that's what uh, Paul's talking to Timothy. Amen. There, Amen. There's been an impartation to you, but now you're responsible for keeping that fire hot. Now there's a fourth point. So let's go over what I've talked about so forth. There's Love, love, the Word of God, love. fellowshipping around the Word of God, and imparting, being in, having the fire imparted to you. And the fourth one is releasing the fire. Mm -hmm. You have to begin to release it. Uh, otherwise, it's just shut up in your bones. So I'm going okay. to ask Sherry to read this. This first. is Jeremiah, verse 20. I mean, chapter 20, verse 9. But if I say, I will not remember him nor speak any more in his name. This is about God. So Jeremiah, the people came up to Jeremiah and said, we don't want to hear any more about God. Mm -hmm. We've heard all we want to hear. Don't say any more about him. This is his response. Then in my heart, it becomes like a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I am tired of holding it in and I cannot endure it. Oh, so if Hallelujah. you've got the fire, Hallelujah. you've got to release it to other people. And that's what Sherry and I do. We release the fire we we teach about the fire we yeah. we tell people how important it is to have the fire and, and we pray for them to receive it and, and we lay hands on them we impart it we and we release it and we'll do it today we'll impart yes, the fire amen. into you amen. if you want it uh Hallelujah. I, i've shown you it's very important and and going back to the uh, basic 
thesis of this message, it's that a fire in your core, a fire within your core will fuel, oh, listen to me, will fuel healing, a healthy body, mm -hmm. a healthy mind, prosperity, Hallelujah. and ministry. So you need it. We yeah. all need it. We you can't get it. by without it. You need the fire. Hallelujah. Operating, activating. Thank you, Jesus. In you. Thank you, Jesus. All right, I'm turning it over to Sherry. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for the fire. I thank you, Lord, that you have filled us up uh, with your burning fire. Hallelujah. Lord, you have filled us up with your love. You have filled us up with your word. You have filled us up, Lord, uh, with that fire that never is quenched in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. And Lord, I thank you right now. Just receive it I, I, right now in Jesus' name. Let the fire go into your spirit, man. Let it go into your soulish realm, into your thinking, into your, into your attitude, your emotions. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And Lord, I impart that love, your love, agape love. Let it grow in each one of us. Lord, we ask for more of it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. More love, more fire, more fellowship with yes, you. Yes, in Lord. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. 